Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Star Wars Meg, here to give you all of the news from a galaxy far, far away, and as always to provide you with a Mandalorian Season 3 update. In today's edition of the news, we're going to be talking about a really huge rumour that has emerged from Lucasfilm Insiders, and we're also going to be talking about a potential Luke Skywalker spin-off show. As always, before I dive into the news, please may I ask you to hit like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and welcome if you are, and make sure you bitch slap that notification bell to be alerted each and every time I post new content to the channel. You can expect daily Star Wars updates from me. Now without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So let's take a look at this big new rumour. So this is the article and it's titled, Spoiler will reportedly appear in the second half of The Mandalorian Season 3. So I'm going to read you the article now, but I will say, take everything with a pinch of salt because nothing is confirmed unless Lucasfilm say it is. But I am covering this because I like to keep you guys up to date with all the stuff that arises in the news to do with The Mandalorian. So now let's take a look at the article. New reports from two Lucasfilm insiders claim that Season 3 is going to expand upon Moff Gideon's cloning project that fans were made aware of in Chapter 12 of Season 2. It is believed that one episode near the end of Season 3 will show the full fruition and rise of Snoke, the eventual supreme leader of the First Order. In Season 2's finale, Moff Gideon said that he needed Grogu's blood to bring order back into the galaxy. In other words, this strongly hints at the cloning of Palpatine, who would eventually return in Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. The cloning process involved the creation of failures and strand casts, one of which is Snoke. Filoni and Favreau are trying to bridge the Mandalorian to the controversial and divisive sequel trilogy, while also trying to include more backstory to the character in an attempt to make J.J. Abrams' big bad of the sequels make a little bit more sense. Is it possible that Moff Gideon did lie to Mando about being finished with Grogu? It could be the case that in Season 3, Moff Gideon frees himself from the shackles of the New Republic or counts on another big bad from the Imperial Remnant to capture Grogu from Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy. Some fans on Reddit have suggested that Moff Gideon could use Essence Transfer to transfer Grogu's life essence into a clone who would eventually become Supreme Leader Snoke himself. This would retcon a lot of the confusion of Snoke's backstory and would explain one key element of what we know about him. Snoke's biography in several companion books and encyclopedias says that he witnessed the rise and fall of the Galactic Empire. This wouldn't make sense if he was a simple strand cast controlled by Palpatine as Episode 9 suggests. The essence transfer explanation would help the story along with more coherence. There is a problem though. Star Wars fans have shown immense disdain for the sequel trilogy on the whole, and Snoke was amongst the most disliked Star Wars characters in the entire franchise. On the other end of the scale, Grogu is beloved by pretty much everyone, and if Lucasfilm were to do this, it would divide the fanbase even further. So I completely agree with this last point, and I'm not a fan of this rumour if it does come to fruition. I do think we are going down the Snoke Palpatine route with the cloning facility, but I really don't want that to have any bearing on the character of Grogu who is so beloved. I think that would be a very easy cop out and an easy way out. There are so many possibilities they could do to expand the story of Grogu. He could become a Mandalorian Jedi. He could train sometimes with Luke, sometimes with Din. He might be in trouble and then Din will come and rescue him and then we'll have the Clan of Two return. Mando could go to the Armorer and ask for advice as to what to do with the Darksaber. And this could also lead into Grogu's story as well. But I don't want them to take the Snoke route in the sense of Grogu having his life essence transferred into Snoke. I think that would be really lazy and I don't think fans would be very happy. I also can't help but feel that even if Snoke is going to come back and they are trying to bridge the Mandalorian with the sequels, do we really need to see Snoke in live action again? Do we really need to see that happen? Could they not just allude to it? And I know a lot of fans want them to steer clear completely from the sequel trilogy. And while I also think that would be an awesome thing, especially in light of now that Luke Skywalker has returned, the real Luke, not Jake Skywalker, as Mark Hamill puts him in the sequels, I think Lucasfilm would be making a terrible mistake to really bridge them in a strong way. Because there is trust again between Lucasfilm and the fans to some extent. Fans absolutely love The Mandalorian. We absolutely love the idea of the Book of Boba Fett coming out in December. And a lot of the other spin-off shows are literally our bread and butter of Star Wars. Whether it's Rangers of the New Republic or Ahsoka or Obi-Wan Kenobi, there is so much to look forward to. 
but they absolutely do not need to tie in the Mandalorian into the sequels in any potent strong way. But I could be wrong and that's just my opinion so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And without any more jibber jabber let's move on to our next article. So this is from Screen Rant and they say why a Luke Skywalker series is a good idea and why it should be avoided. I just want to stick to the positives because I found that the negatives were a bit weak in this article. So the first reason they give for a Luke Skywalker series is the fact that Sebastian Stan could appear as Luke. Definitely one of the most talked about subjects branching off of Luke's appearance in The Mandalorian was Sebastian Stan, well known as Bucky Barnes in the MCU. The reason being given a wardrobe and a fitting hairstyle, Sebastian could potentially pull off a very convincing young post-return of the Jedi Luke. Having an entire series using a minor lookalike covered in facial or vocal effects would cost a fortune, especially for a convincing CGI. But Sebastian Stan is a way to get a series with Luke starring again without spending unnecessarily. Lucasfilm would just need him to do his best Mark Hamill or Luke Skywalker impression. The next reason they give is that it could be an Obi-Wan Kenobi style miniseries. A great answer for Lucasfilm and fans to have their cake and eat it too, like with other upcoming Star Wars shows, is to make this a limited series. Having a Luke Skywalker show that's a one and done season could be a good way to tell an excellent story with a fan favourite character without steering the franchise firmly back into incredibly familiar territory for years. Another reason is it could show what becomes of Grogu. The easiest narrative choice in favour of having a Luke Skywalker series would be a storyline with him training Grogu. The species clearly ages extremely slowly, so we definitely wouldn't be able to see a time jump where he's even an adolescent, as Luke would likely be older than he is in the sequels. Nonetheless, it's evident that Luke is still a seasoned Jedi after Return of the Jedi and that Grogu's force abilities are potent. Therefore, there's plenty for the former to teach the latter, and it would make for a great story arc with flexibility in who can be the antagonists. I guess my issue with this point is that it would just be too similar to the direction they're going in with The Mandalorian Season 3. A final excellent idea for Luke Skywalker's spin-off show is also to show him at his full power, potentially even before The Mandalorian, kicking off specifically right after Return of the Jedi, we can see Luke in his full power. So that is all of the news I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed the video and if you did be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you next time. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day no matter where you dwell in the galaxy and if you're feeling generous please head over to my Patreon page where for just 2 or $10 a month you can get exclusive access to content that is not found here on this platform. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one.